Hello my lovely friends, my name is Ava and these are some romance books that have the class difference trope in them. So this is basically a trope where the characters in this couple and the romantic relationship are of different social classes. So one may be like a prince and one may be a commoner, like kind of thing, you know, like different social classes. So some of these are historical, obviously, because it happens a lot of historicals, but there are also quite a few contemporary ones in here. So I'm excited to share with you all my recommendations. First, I have Duchess by Day, Mistress by Night by Stacey Reed. This is a historical romance and it is a romance between Georgiana and Reese. Georgiana is the Duchess of Hardcastle. She is a single mother and she is a widow. Um, and then Reese, known as like the broker, he is a lowly of society but he's made his way up in like money standing because he kind of like blackmails people a little bit <laughs> people ask him to do these tasks to find people for them um in exchange for favors and so like he'll ask people like people will ask him to like go find a certain person or go find certain people for him for them and he'll be like okay i will do this for you but you owe me a favor if I do this and they're like okay cool and they're all rich people and so he's made his way up in society money wise but not in class wise essentially like people don't see him as of high class they see him as a lowly peasant still because of where he was born and where he came from. Georgiana however she is thoroughly entranced by Reese thinks he is gorgeous to look at um <laughs> and one day her son goes missing and so she asks reese to help her find him he will do anything for this woman because he is so smitten with her they are forced to like kind of like be in this situation together while they're trying to find her son um and so i just i loved this i don't read a lot of books where the heroine is of higher class than the hero and i really loved how that played in here, played a role in here. I then have Dearest Rogue by Elizabeth Hoyt. This is another situation where the heroine is of higher standing than the hero. Lady Phoebe is the sister to a very powerful duke and James Trevelyan is just a lowly soldier, captain. He ends up being Lady Phoebe's bodyguard and so they end up falling in love with one another. This one is so good. It's one of my favorite romances, one of my favorite historical romances for sure. Just like they are both pining after one another and James, oh my gosh. It's an age gap so James is older quite older than phoebe and phoebe does not care also phoebe is visually impaired she is blind she needs a bodyguard because in that time period the world was not obviously accessible for those who have disabilities and so james just is her companion basically and her bodyguard to hopefully steer her clear of any dangers she might walk into oh my gosh the longing in this book was top notch the romance in here was amazing and just like lady phoebe and her like confidence in loving this man it's just like so good and james is so smitten over her so smitten i can't stop gushing over this it's so good i then have hurts to love you by alicia rye this is the third book a part of the forbidden hearts series i really recommend that you read them in order you don't necessarily have to because they're all companion books but like i feel like you get more bang for your book if you did you know eve is an heiress okay so that's she's of higher standing as well <laughs> and um eve is an heiress and so uh she's due to inherit a lot of money um, and her parents uh, don't want her to like get with anyone of lower standing than her, but she can help a fall for her brother's best friend who is big, tattooed, just a big giant hottie. Oh my gosh, she is so smitten with him. But Gabe is the son to the housekeeper of their estate. And so her father would definitely not approve of their relationship. I love this book so much. Eve is a curvier heroine. So we have that representation in there, even though the cover model does not show that um but i just loved this so much and thought that this was just perfection like i loved this my favorite book in the series i just loved our heroine in here and i really loved how the hero adored this woman loved it then we have a nordic king by karina halley um this is book number three a part of the nordic royal series you can totally read this one on its own i read this one first read it on its own um this one is about the king of i believe denmark king of denmark king of something I think <laughs> and he needs a nanny for his two little girls um his wife has passed so he is a widow um and he needs a nanny to take care of his children so i heard in here her name is aurora she decides to go apply for this job the moment that um <laughs> axel the hero sees her he's like nope she's not gonna be the nanny because he is so attracted to her and he doesn't want to be attracted to his nanny but his little girls see her and immediately fall in love with her and so he's like oh fine like i have to hire her now now that my children love her it's also an age gap romance he is way older than her um and she's obviously just a little 
nanny and he is the king of a country and so like there's obviously a dichotomy with their class difference there and this was just so sweet i love the incorporation of like children into books i love kids and so like i just love how both of these people fully loved and embraced these children so beautiful next i have royally screwed by emma chase um if you didn't know i love emma chase especially this series the royally series this is about prince nicholas of wesco okay and he goes to New York for some reason and he goes into this little coffee shop, this bakery, and there he sees the heroine and he is quite smitten with her. But he says some things that really piss her off and make her really angry and she throws a pie in his face. <laughs> he is just like entranced by this woman who would throw a pie in a prince's face and like, <laughs> He's just smitten with her from that point on. And so this relationship is very forbidden because he's the crown prince of a country. And according to Wesco law, you have to marry either a woman of Wesco and a woman of higher birth. And so um, our heroine in here is neither of those things because she lives in New York. So this book is about them trying to navigate their very forbidden relationship um, because he is a prince and she's just a little waitress from New York. <laughs> then I have The Viking Chief's Marriage Alliance by Lucy Morris. This is a Viking romance. So our, our heroine in here, she was actually a widow. She was the Jarl's wife. So a Jarl is essentially kind of like a king in that time period. Um, and so she's very much used to the higher society life according, and well, in this time period at least. And so her long boat that she's in ends up crashing and the hero in this book ends up saving her. And he's very judgmental about her from the get-go because she's in well-to-do clothing and everything and he just doesn't care for people who are rich. But by some circumstances in this book, they have to end up getting married to one another. Very reluctantly, they don't want to marry the other person at all. This is definitely a class difference relationship because she is um, used to be a Jarl's wife and he's just a lowly Viking chief in a very like small little Viking village and so she's like getting used to living in that area. Next I have Any Duchess Will Do by Tessa Dare. This is about Griffin who is a duke and his mother is forcing him to choose a bride. So she ends up taking her son to Spindle Cove, otherwise known as Spinster Cove, to hopefully find himself the future duchess. There he like walks walks to a room and his mother's like okay pick any woman in this room and I will make her a duchess and he's like okay bet I don't want to get um, married to anybody so I'm gonna pick somebody who I think cannot actually become a duchess and so he sees Pauline who's kind of like the little barmaid basically and he's like oh yeah pick her and so <laughs> um she like goes to london with them to learn how to be a duchess even though griffin has lowly like paid her under the table to be like hey if you like try to make sure that you're horrible at becoming a duchess i will pay you a lot of money so you can own the bookstore you've always wanted she's like amazing wonderful i wasn't gonna be a good duchess anyway this book is just hilarious it is so funny um because pauline is a little barmaid and this guy is a duke and so she's trying to or his mother is trying to teach her how to become a duchess even though pauline is very bad at it even if she doesn't like she's not even trying to be really bad at it she's bad at it <laughs> from the get-go but through them like spending time together and them figuring out who this person really is deep inside they start to fall in love with one another and gosh it is so good i totally love this one another book by tessa dare is a lady by midnight this is book number three a part of the spindle cove series so it's the book that takes place before the one i just talked about this is about kate and samuel kate has been living in Sp spindle cove for quite a long time she's kind of like the piano teacher part of the town so kate at the beginning of this book like figures out that she may or may not be related to a very well-to-do family even though she's been an orphan her whole life and she has no idea where she comes from she realizes that she may be a very distant relative to these very rich and powerful people and so this is her relationship with the militia commander of spindle cove named samuel and he knows he does not deserve this woman he knows that she is built for way bigger and better things in life and will go and do amazing big things and he does not want to stop her from doing all those things because of his standing in society and she's like i do not care at all i love you and oh it was so good this book was really great as well most of the spindle Gov series is really good so i really recommend diving into that series and lastly i have the royal we by heather cox and jessica morgan this one is kind of like a reimagining and retelling of william and kate so in this book the hero and the heroine end up going to the same college together he is the prince of wales she is not from england she is from america so she goes to um i think it's cambridge right i don't remember the exact school <laughs> um but they end up going to the same school together in england and they end up becoming like 
best friends best friends then it slowly starts to turn into something more and you really see their relationship and how people disapprove of it because she is just a regular american girl and he is the prince of england the prince of wales this book is very similar i feel like to william and kate except she is from america and there's a bunch of other things going on in here as well it's very 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 different from the actual william and kate story this deals a lot with like the press and paparazzi and everything too and how they can really like um distort your image and it was very interesting and i really liked the um discussion of he did not care about their different standings in life even though she was constantly reminded of it he just did not care at all it's so, like i love how devoted he was to this girl so there you have it those are 10 books that have the class difference trope in there please let me know if you have read any of these books or if you plan to but anyways thank y'all so so much for watching i will see y'all soon in my next one bye y'all